My name's Troy Mangum, and uh, I've been uh, a bit of the man behind the scenes. So uh, Red Hat's been really active this year, and uh, I've been involved in all of the Tech Field Day um, you know, presentations and, and et cetera, but it's all been kind of behind the scenes. So today we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be going through the uh, OpenShift portfolio. And for those that have seen this before, uh, I, I do want it to be an interactive session. So it's a little bit of a primer just to kind of get us started, get an overview of kind of what OpenShift is doing. Uh, and then we'll kind of get into what we're going to be covering uh, today at Tech Field Day. So let's start here. OpenShift everywhere. So uh, one of the items that uh, I want to cover and that I'm really excited about, we haven't actually GA'd this product yet, but with Amazon, we just announced that we're going to be doing a, a cloud native service in Amazon. Uh, we call it ROSA. Uh, it's referred to as Red Hat OpenShift on Amazon. Uh, prior to this announcement, we've had something called OpenShift Dedicated, which was a managed service on Amazon. Uh, but what's kind of distinguishing this next step with Amazon uh, is we're effectively going to be on the native console, which means we're going to be right alongside EKS, right alongside ECS, and uh, we're going to be integrated into the whole AWS experience. So we're really excited about that partnership and, and working with them. Uh, I believe we announced this at KubeCon. Uh, we've done some stuff with reInvent last week, and we're looking to GA that product early next year. So that's sort of the, the big new news uh, in how we are making OpenShift available everywhere as a platform. Uh, you still, on the left-hand side, you can still see that um, customers can manage OpenShift on their own, leveraging uh, AWS's compute and, and storage and et cetera. Uh, or they can choose uh, the option to, you know, have us manage it and jointly support it with Amazon. So that's sort of the big news on the left. Uh, we've had a really uh, great relationship with Microsoft. Uh, we have a managed service offering with them called ARO or Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Again, this is jointly managed and supported between Microsoft and Red Hat. You know, the, the dogs and cats are now finally getting together. Uh, the customers can manage that as well on Azure. Uh, with Google, we have OpenShift Dedicate, which means Red Hat takes all the responsibility to support and manage this in a Google environment, or the customer can take that responsibility. Obviously, our, our um, IBM, uh, we've got some great work with IBM Cloud, and which actually this is something that IBM goes to market with, and they uh, manage it for their customers leveraging OpenShift and uh, we jointly support it. And then on the far right-hand side, you can see what we're doing on premises and a little bit on the edge. Uh, and that's related to OpenShift container platform. And this is what everything is sort of built off of. So uh, we're really excited about this platform. We believe it, it's a, um, it is really a, a premier enterprise Kubernetes platform, and it is truly a platform, meaning that you're going to have the same experience if you're a developer or an operator, no matter what environment you're running in. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of break down three components of this platform, and then I'm going to tell you a story about one of the customers that we've uh, worked with recently. So the very bare bones in the very bottom, you can see that effectively we offer something called OpenShift Kubernetes Engine. And so this is really just the host operating system, Kubernetes, and then the cluster services. And so this would be over the air updates, monitoring, logging, you know, all the things you need to do to run uh, Kubernetes. And, um, and so this is sort of our, our first tier offering. Uh, you would think of this for, for customers that, you know, one at one, run uh, just a few apps, if you will. But what we're really excited about is the whole platform. And what does that mean when we say platform? Well, we're talking about adding platform services, then you can see the, the list of those there, uh, application services, data services, and developer services. Um, we've uh, been at Tech Field Day this year, and, and we've uh, highlighted some of these along the way. And so this is what we mean by a platform, uh, meaning that we're gonna be really helping those operators and developers realize what they're trying to do with cloud native applications 
through these services we offer. And then recently, this year, uh, we launched Advanced Cluster Management. This actually was uh, something called a um, multi-cloud manager at IBM. And then all those engineers and, and the product moved over to Red Hat uh, in this year. And then this year we launched uh, something called Advanced Cluster Manager. And what this allows uh, our customers to do is be able to manage across clouds and across Kubernetes distributions. And so we've shown that at our original tech field day. So you can use this management plane to, to manage EKS, AKS, uh, OpenShift. You can use it to manage on-premises in the cloud and it has a very uh, robust application lifecycle um, functionality as well. So we're very proud of this. Uh, it, it had a good run at IBM prior to even coming to Red Hat. So it's actually been in market with customers for almost two years. And so it's very mature uh, as being a, a multi-cluster manager. So, so that's the platform. Now let's, uh, let's talk about what this means for a customer. So Macquarie Bank is uh, a bank that's actually out of Sydney but it's a quite a large bank in the APAC region in Asia and Australia. They've got about 50,000 employees. They've got 27 locations and they've been a really great partner with Red Hat. We've actually been working with them uh, since about 2017 in the, in, with OpenShift and they've done some really amazing and interesting things with our product as well as with the clouds that they have been working with. So with that large of a employee base, they had about 300 developers. And so what they were wanting to do is really kind of, so think 2017 here, they were really wanting to push into how can we be more advanced in our digital banking? So this is more than just, um, you know, sort of banking uh, mobile apps. Uh, they were wanting to uh, become a little bit like Mint, if for those that are familiar with that. So they wanted their customers to be able to, to be able to set savings goals. They want to be able to upload images and receipts and checks, and and they wanted to be able to, to do something where they could tag and track and auto categorize all the transactions, you know, much like uh, Mint does. And so they wanted a really robust experience. And so for that. Um, they needed to move faster uh, just to be competitive. And, but the IT organization was, was struggling to kind of meet this speed demand. So it really was uh, a struggle for them to, to be setting up these environments quickly uh, and then also for them to roll them out quickly so they could get a quick feedback loop with their customer base. So we basically came in and said, okay, um, you're wanting to leverage the cloud, which in this case, they wanted to leverage AWS. Um, and they wanted, to, they wanted to be able to develop on a platform that would work across clouds, which they actually are now across uh, Google and AWS uh, running OpenShift. So they wanted a consistent experience between you know, the lab and production. Uh, from a security standpoint, their security team wanted to be able to actually have visibility into the pipeline from the developer to production or from the developer to uh, pre-stage production. And so they wanted visibility into the pipeline. And so being able to uh, provide gates and visibility as the code moved through. And then that, you know, customer, they wanted that quick feedback loop. So they were able to effectively roll out uh, features at maybe to a thousand customers, get quick feedback, make modifications, and then roll it out more. So they've been a, a really interesting customer for us. And in here's some of the things they've actually achieved. So they achieved a 50% uh, better developer productivity, uh, but how do you measure productivity? And, and I kind of show here that the, the time it took from dev to production increased uh, was was fifty percent faster. Uh, that was helped by uh, Ansible and as well as other CI/CD automation functionality, and uh, they were able to reduce that, their provisioning time for developer environments down to ten minutes, where it used to take a lot longer. And then, uh, obviously, with con using containers, they were able to you know make everything really dense. Now, one thing I, I want to say about this customer that's really interesting: you hear a lot about lift and shift. Um, 
this customer specifically, they actually chose to refactor these applications before they moved them into the cloud. And so what they've been able to achieve uh, was done not through a lift and shift use case, but actually refactoring first, kind of doing the hard work first, if you will, uh, and then moving them up. So it, in before using OpenShift, uh, they were used, it took several hours for them to get a deployment out during a day. Now it's literally minutes. And so they can deploy or they're deploying now at 40, 40 deployments a day. Um, their approval process to get code out to production has been increased. And then right now, this snapshot, uh, they have 500 applications running on OpenShift. And as I said, they're running that platform on AWS as well as Google. So they are a, kind of a premier um, multi-club cloud customer. But it took them a little while, right? We started working with them in 2017 and just recently they, they kind of announced uh, what they're doing in the multi-cloud in, in uh, 2020. So it's kind of a quick snapshot of our, our platform, uh, what it's done for one of our customers. And so why are we here today? So everything in green, we've actually talked through with you guys um, at Tech Field Day prior to this event. So uh, based on some of the feedback we got from, I believe it was a Cloud Field Day, um, there was a real interest we heard uh, from you guys to, to look at you know, what are we doing for developers? How are we helping operations kind of move into more SRE roles and, and for development roles? And that's uh, one of the things we're gonna be covering today. Uh, Jason's gonna be, be presenting that to you. And then Edge obviously is a, is a very much a, a greenfield opportunity for many companies. There's a lot of people involved in, in Edge. And right now there's not like a clear winner of who's, who's uh, really defining what's gonna happen there. And so we are very active in the edge and we're gonna be talking with uh, our, our product management team and looking at some of the things that we've done for our customers, uh, a really interesting um, example uh, later on today.